In 2022, I was diagnosed with muscle tension dysphonia, MTD. I was sitting in a meeting with about four other co-workers and it was a little bit underwhelming and I wanted to participate just to add a little bit pleasantness to the mood. And as the person was presenting, I wanted to say, okay, but for some reason I couldn't get my words out. It just got stuck in my body. It wasn't the first time this happened. It has happened many times before where I wanted to say something, but the words wouldn't come out. It would take too much effort for the words to leave my mouth. But this time I decided to look for an ear, nose and throat doctor. I went, he put a telescope through my nose, down my throat, he had me do some vocalizations and he confirmed that I have tightness in the muscles around my throat. He then printed out to me a list of foods not to eat and how much water to drink, but that list was already checked off in my routine. And then he prescribed me a muscle relaxant which I refused to take because it had a host of side effects that are damaging to the health in the long run. Keep in mind that at this point I had walked into his office knowing that the root cause for any muscle tension that I have in my voice is psychological. And honestly I was also frustrated because his solution was putting a band-aid that will make things worse instead of getting to the root cause. So in that frustration I felt that walking out of his office, super motivation emerged to do whatever it takes to figure out a sustainable solution through trial and error and condensing all the knowledge that I've been gathering for years, I started to get sustainable results. In this video, I'm going to share with you what is a moody voice, how to recognize it when you have it, and how to master your voice naturally so it works when you need it to. If this is your first time here, my name is Hossam. I help people go from socially anxious to socially confident through healing their inhibited voice, both psychologically and physically, at the root cause. If that sounds like a good cause, please smash that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. With that, let's dive in. Our voice responds to our mood. It's a fine-tuned instrument. You may notice if you feel shame, rejection, discouragement. Your chest, your belly, and your throat may start to create tightness, stifling your expression. Because your brain thinks if your expression is stifled, you're more safe because you're more hidden. You may notice that you don't want to speak, and if you do speak, you may feel like you dislike your voice. You may notice you sound fake and inauthentic and unnatural. On the other hand, when you're feeling inspired, motivated and confident, you notice that your voice is reflecting these qualities as well. It sounds more open, more rich, more resonant. This is why it is of critical importance to learn the tools to heal psychologically so that when your mood changes, your voice remains unfazed, remains steady, stable and totally reliable authentically and naturally. When we're triggered with undesired emotion or sensation in the body, like tightness in the jaw or the throat, oftentimes it has a root cause in a psychological event that got stuck in the past instead of being processed. I'm going to share with you three examples to discern whether or not your voice responds to your psychological state. The first example, upon waking up, do you feel it's difficult for you to speak? Do you feel tightness maybe in your jaw muscles or in your throat? If that's so, it's a sign of your nervous system responding to something that's rooted psychologically, that hasn't been processed. The second example. If you wake up feeling normal regarding your voice, and as the day progresses, you start to accumulate tightness. Maybe minor triggers are happening consciously or subconsciously. That is also a sign to your nervous system creating the tightness in response to something psychologically rooted that hasn't been processed yet. The third example. If after an intense workout you experience this vocal tightness and it's difficult for you to speak, that is because during the workout you're breathing deeply, which creates a cascading effect like a massage in your belly and releasing all the emotions from the organs. And as these emotions are released and moving up, they get stuck in the throat. They get stuck in that bottleneck, creating the tightness and makes it difficult for you to speak. In any of the three cases, healing psychologically is of utmost importance to release the tightness at the nervous system level as well as healing at the musculature level. Remember the importance of your voice. While some people still find it difficult to believe that their voice is critical for their life success, many people who tuned in, who invested time and energy to restore their true authentic voice definitely experienced the truth. I'm grateful that I'm experiencing it myself. It has definitely opened up doors for me, relationship-wise, career-wise, and it improved my own mental health. Every single day, as you wake up, you take some time to prepare to present yourself to the world. 
you examine your hair, your skin, how you look, it is so important not to ignore your vocal image. Not only is it half of the equation of your presentation to the world, most of the time your vocal image is way more impactful when presenting yourself to the world. Even your credentials in your profession and career, no matter how polished and stacks of certifications and degrees that you have, they will go unnoticed if you don't have the voice that captivates and informs. Your voice must cause your listeners to be receptive to your message so that you can do right to the significance of your ideas. For the majority of my life, I would watch people with less significant ideas than the ones I had take priority because they had the ability to express their ideas in a charming and captivating way, where I didn't have this ability. Mastering your voice immediately gives the results that you get in your life a greater quality. You don't want your voice to sound fatigued, monotone, or raspy. Not only are these qualities uncomfortable for you as a speaker, they break rapport with the listener, be it your coworkers, clients, or even your family and friends. It is on the other hand, a liberating sensation when your voice has clarity, efficiency, and intelligibility in a natural and comfortable way. This kind of voice wins you the quality of magnetism. It magnetizes to you the right partnerships, both at work and in your personal life. With a little bit of practice, a charismatic voice can be yours. A great place to start is in the description. I have a link to my free mini course that will walk you through the foundations to have a healthy voice. And if you feel ready to join my full course to learn everything that you will need to speak with confidence for life, the link is in the description as well. The exercises I share are designed to familiarize your body with the true power and joy using your authentic voice. The results are immediate and sustainable, which is so important because I don't want people to be thinking about their voice in the middle of interactions. I want people to be fully present in the middle of interactions. As you make the transition to unleashing your natural voice, you will notice each week your personality is changing because your personality is limited to the expression of your voice. And as you expand the capacity of your voice, you'll notice that your personality is unpacking parts of yourself that you may have forgotten about. You'll notice that your tone of voice is not only sounding more pleasant, but it has a soothing command to it. You'll be able to speak to new people more easily because now your voice has these varieties, these tonalities, these colors and textures that used to be inhibited, but now are uncovered. Something I see that's common with the clients I work with and I used to struggle with it myself is speaking to persons in authority. Oftentimes there's an unconscious belief that goes something like, I'm lesser than. Subsequently, the voice changes Subsequently, the whole dynamic of the interaction changes and the person responds in a manner that reflects the sentiment of which I'm approaching them with. Because we attract from people that which we project. When we project insecurity, we get a response based on that. When we project confidence and friendliness, we immediately get a response that corresponds as well. Now, if you're one of the many that don't like their voice, I know what it's like. And I invite you to examine your past. When did you feel shameful? of your voice? When did somebody make you feel embarrassed about expressing yourself? More often than not, this is the moment when your relationship with your voice has changed. That's when your brain started to give signals to your throat muscles to tighten up to stifle your expression. As unfortunate as it is, there are solutions. First, you can work with a coach to effectively process these events. Another solution is that you can journal about it. I encourage you to explore what it felt like during this event. I encourage you to explore the details of how that event is stored in your unconscious mind. For example, do you see it inside of your mind's eye in color or black and white? Were there many people or were there few people or no people? Was it indoors or outdoors? By doing so, you're pulling up the file of the memory that you want to process and transform. Then you can ask yourself, what do you wish to have instead? Or what do you wish to have had instead? What are the feelings that you wish to have felt instead? What are the behavior that you wish the other person would have done or the way you would have responded? In other words, you're reparenting yourself in that event in a more mindful and resourceful way. While doing this work, give yourself a lot of grace, a lot of love, a lot of support, because that's what's gonna help you heal and process these events because more than likely, that was what was missing from these events. 
and now you're back with more resources to reparent yourself and give yourself these needed resources. And of course, if you need one-on-one -on -one help, I would be pleased to help you fast track your results. Check my website in the description to view my calendar. In conclusion, many of the communication books that I read and many of the communication gurus out there that I listen to speak of the sentiment that to speak with confidence, you need to pick yourself up by the bootstraps and apply the tips and tricks. Well, in my experience, that is not how it works in a sustainable way. In my experience, you need to heal psychologically and you must work on releasing the tightness in the muscles around your vocal cords so that you speak with confidence, truly and authentically for life. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it valuable. If you did, please smash that like button. Leave a comment if you have any questions for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay well. Much love. I'll see you in the next video.